so today we're finishing up our bread week, which has been three weeks of bread, and super fun for me because I love doing bread, but we're going to be doing bagels this week. And so for the blog, we're doing two different flavors. We're going to do a savory flavor, so we're going to do cheddar and Old Bay, and then we're going to do a sweet flavor, which is going to be an orange chocolate chip. So we're going to make one base dough, and then we're going to split it into two and make a little bit of each flavor. But you can pick one flavor or you can do both flavor like flavors like we're going to do. It's totally up to you. So this is a lot like um, the focaccia bread that we did week one where it's just the flour, the water, salt, and yeast. The only other weird ingredient is it's a tablespoon of honey. I made bagels a lot at the restaurant, again, for brunch on the weekends. And the recipe that we always used had honey. So this is a fun addition. It gives it a little bit of a little bit of flavor difference, not too terribly much, so it's not going to throw off your savory bagels and be like, oh, this is weird, because we used to make just plain bagels with it, but I really enjoy this recipe, and I hope you will too. So we're going to start with our flour. And then we'll add our salt and yeast. And then lastly, we're going to add our water and our honey. And I came across something as I was scaling out this recipe for the video and I thought I would share a fun tip with you guys. I only have this much honey left in my bottle and it's really hard to get that amount out. So something you can do is you can pop this bottle into the microwave for 30 seconds or into a pot of hot water just so that it it loosens it up a little bit and it'll pour right out just like like water would. Um, if you pop it in the microwave, this guy has like a shiny label, I would peel that off and then also double check that usually there's a foil label on the inside to prevent it from being tampered with. Make sure there's no foil anywhere on the bottle. So I would take this label off and then double check that there's no foil on the top before you put it into the microwave because you don't want to cause a fire in your house while you're trying to make bread. That just puts no fun in the whole process. So we've got all of our ingredients in here except for our flavors. We're going to add those after we mix our dough a little bit and then we'll go from there. Alright, so our bagel dough is mixed and you'll the first thing you'll notice is that this dough is very different from the focaccia and the challah dough that we made and that this dough is definitely more of a tough, it's less sticky, there's not as much moisture in it. So. I'll just show you that. So as you can see, it's not sticking at all. It's a nice ball. Um, we'll do the window pane test on it so you can see that it's actually completely done mixing. Because that's another thing. This, this one, you let it go a little bit longer or you would need it a little bit longer than you think you need to. Because it comes together so fast because there's not as much liquid that you think, oh, it's not it's not wet anymore, so it's ready to go, but sometimes it might not be fully mixed. So you definitely want to make sure that you do your window pane test and you can see the light through the dough before it starts breaking. So we're completely done with this guy. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to split it into two so that I can show you the two different flavors. And then we're going to mix in our ingredients. I'm doing an orange chocolate chip. So I have orange zest and then chocolate chips here. Another um, life hack, I guess you could call it, is if you are a person who buys a lot of citrus and or a lot of citrus, and you find yourself when you go to make a cake thinking, "Oh, I'll make a lemon cake," and then you don't have lemon zest, and you have to go buy more lemons. Every time you buy citrus, if you're like my mother-in-law, drinks lime or lemon in all of her tea, so she buys a lot of lemons. You could actually um, zest that lemon zest off wrap it in plastic wrap and then store it in your freezer and then use your lemon like you normally would or if you eat a lot of oranges you could do the same thing with oranges and then when you go to make that cake and you need that zest you have it in your in your freezer already and you just pull it out and use it so that's a good note um, something else to note though is that if you're going to do that you need to then protect your fruit because the zest is gone and that's that nice hard outer protectorant that the fruit has so you're going to want to wrap it up in plastic wrap. I would avoid aluminum foil because sometimes the acid and the foil don't interact so well. I don't know how it would taste after you wrap it in foil. But definitely wrap it in plastic 
so that you are preventing it from drying out. Because then if you don't, you're going to go use this a day or two later, and it's going to be so dry that it's not really going to be any use to it. So that's your life hack for your, your zest and your orange. Um, the other one we're going to do is we're going to do cheddar and Old Bay. Old Bay is definitely a Maryland thing. If you are not from like the Virginia, Maryland, probably Delaware area, then you may have never heard of Old Bay. My sister-in-law, my baby brother's wife, um, had never heard of Old Bay, and I had to educate her recently. She's young. It's always You can always learn something new no matter how old you are. But she is also not from this area. She's originally from Michigan, um, which is where they both live now. But she'd never heard of Old Bay. And if I had told my husband that, he would have thought it was blasphemy. But I understand that not everybody has heard of Old Bay. But. So we're going to do Cheddar Old Bay. If you like Old Bay, you can use that. If you don't like Old Bay, you can do just the cheddar. Um, you could add chives to it. You can be creative. So those are the flavors we're going to do. But we're going to cut it in half. And then like we did with the hollow bread last week, we add our ingredients, especially things like chocolate chips, to the dough after you've mixed it because you want to make sure that that gluten forms uninhibited by the hard pieces of chocolate chip or raisins or whatever you're putting in it from preventing that gluten structure from building up. So that's the next step. Okay, so we have our two. There's our cheddar old bay. And here's our chocolate chip orange. And they're ready to go. We're gonna let them rest until they double in size, like you always do with bread. Um, one thing to note is I ended up having to knead the ingredients in by hand because when I put it on my KitchenAid, it was just too little dough. It just kept spinning around with the ingredients, so it wasn't doing what it was supposed to. So I, I did mix them by hand, kneaded them by hand. The orange zest added a little bit of moisture to this guy. So I just, um, in order to keep it from sticking to my hands and to the counter, I just put a little bit of flour on my counter. Just enough so that it's not sticking. You don't want to put too much. So I had like, this This is a half a cup. It was half full, half empty already. I just literally took a sprinkle. So that's very little flour you need to add to it. So that's that. And we'll let them rest and take their little nap and then we'll shape bagels. So that's super exciting. All right, everyone, as you can see, our bagel dough is definitely doubled in size. So I'm going to show you how to shape one, and then we'll go through the rest of the process together. So first things first, I'm going to scale these out because I want them all to be uniform. So I'm going to do them at three ounces a piece. That'll give you a bagel that is about this size. So it's kind of the size that you would get if you were buying bagels at the grocery store, but if you were to go to Panera or Dunkin', it's a little bit smaller than the ones you might get there. I think this is a good size for me, but if you wanted to go a little bit larger, you could. So, that's the first note. So we're going to take our dough out of the bowls. And again, kind of like I noted last week when we made the challah bread, I don't usually spray the inside of my bowls at all. A lot of recipes will tell you to do that to keep it from sticking, but as you can see, there is very little bit of dough left behind in the bowl. I just use my bowl scraper, or you can use a spatula to help it out. So, I usually give it a little press to kind of flatten out some of the air, and then we're going to cut it. So, I know that I'll probably get about four out of this, so I'll just cut it in half, and then cut each half in half. And then we can weigh it just to double check. And it's set, it's at 3.5 ounces. So that's close enough. As long as they're all about the same. This guy's a little smaller. So there we go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do kind of like we did last week with the hala. And we're going to make a snake out of the dough. Kind of like when you used to play with Play-Doh. Um, and remember like we did with the hala last week. It's, it's less of a, a stretching motion and more of a pushing motion. So you're kind of just pushing your dough back and forth and letting it grow underneath your hands. And that will prevent it from ripping. And it's actually stretching it rather than ripping it. And you're not losing that nice gluten structure that you worked so hard to make. So once you have a nice little snake, I usually grab one end of my hand and then connect the other end together like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to rub that connected end along your countertop. So I kind of do it in a back and forth motion, as you can see, so that it kind of connects it. And then you can't even see that connected end. 
And one thing that you want to try and do is when you're making your snake, you want to make sure that it's all kind of even. And I kind of taper the ends a little bit so that they're a little bit narrower than the rest of it so that when you're done, you have this nice bagel that's completely even in size. So I usually give it a good spin around these fingers just to further stretch it out a little bit so you have a nice hole because as it proofs the second time, that hole is going to get smaller. So you're going to stick that on your cookie sheet. I usually spray my cookie sheet with a little bit of hand spray on top of the parchment. I highly recommend using parchment because I baked some on the cookie sheet and it stuck really bad. So you can use parchment, um, spray it down. You could use, you could probably use um, foil paper too, or foil like on top of it too instead of the parchment if you didn't have parchment. But I do recommend using something either that or spraying your, your sheet really, really well to keep it from sticking. So we're going to roll all these out. And then we're going to let them rest until they start to double in size again. So somewhere along the half point of them resting and doubling, so you want to keep an eye on them, you want to have a pot of boiling water ready to go. So you're going to have water and then another tablespoon or so of um, honey inside of your water. And again, it's not enough honey that it's going to make it sweet. It kind of just helps the flavor a little bit. It's not going to be a sweet flavor, so it's not going to make your cheddar bagels taste weird at all, but it does give it a nice, like it's a nice touch to the just plain water that you would boil your bagels in. So we're going to boil that um, once they're about half proofed, and then while we're boiling that, we'll have our oven preheating, so as soon as they're all done boiling, we'll just throw it right into the oven and then they'll bake for about 25 minutes or so until they're golden brown and then they're delicious and done and you can eat them right then or you can wait until breakfast the next morning but not so hard right okay so here are our lovely bagels and i just wanted to show you before we put them into the boiling honey water what to look for so that you know that they are ready to bake so when you press your finger in it keeps that indent so that's how you know it's ready. If it pops back out and doesn't keep that indent, it needs just a few more minutes. Um, like 10 minutes ago or so, they were not keeping the indent. So now they are. And we have our lovely boiling water with our honey in it. And I did think that this, I was curious why um, we boiled ours with honey in it. So I'm just going to dip it. I usually put the pretty side down first because I like that side to be up when I put it back on the pan and then you're just going to let it boil on each side for about 30 seconds so then when I put the second one in pop that one back over and then it's done so it's literally about 30 seconds each side not that much longer than that and but back to the honey I, I thought that this was the reason but I didn't want to misspeak and lie to you guys so I did google it but the reason that we put honey in the water is because it gives it just um, anytime you have sugar it browns things so like when you have cake batters or cookies the reason they turn brown when you bake them is because of the sugar in them and so the reason we put honey is it gives it just that little bit of sugar in it to help it to brown even nicer so we're going to finish boiling these guys, and then we're going to pop it into our oven. As you see, once you get like the first couple in there, it moves pretty quickly. Okay, so our bagels are out of the oven, and I just wanted to show you the difference between these that we use the honey and the water. And the ones that I did for the pictures for the blog the other day, I forgot to put the honey in the water. So you can see there's definitely a difference in color. So if you don't put any honey in your water, you're going to end up with this blonde bagel. It tastes just as good. It just doesn't look as bagel-y. So there you go. There's our delicious bagels. Have fun.